Ricky Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. morning. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky Smiley and the Ricky Smiley Morning Show family. Ricky, you know I love you, appreciate you. Thank God for you and the opportunity to kick off our day with the praise break. Today's song, of course, is by James Fortune, Trusting God. Listen, this is an essential part of growing in our walk with God, and that means sometimes learning to trust God even when you can't trace God. I like this phrase even better we get from the old school church, and that is sometimes you've got to trust God's heart when you cannot trace God's hand. That's really powerful right there because there are times the hand is symbolizing, of course, the power of God. It's symbolizing how God has plans for our lives and is somehow, some way, opening doors, shutting doors, and doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. And every now and then, life gets downright confusing, and that's when we have to trust God's heart when we cannot trace God's hand. But I don't see what God is doing, but I don't see what God is up to when life knocks me down and it feels like I'm staying down. That's when I've got to trust God's heart when I can't trace God's hand. You see, when you trust God's heart, you recognize that God loves you. And since God loves you, God is looking out for you and knows what's best for you, even when life appears to be giving you its worst. I like that right there, because every now and then, when life hits and hurts me with the worst that it has, I know and trust that God's heart loves me. And since God's heart loves me, I know that God is somehow looking out for me. And since God is looking out for me, God is going to make sure that this bad stuff doesn't have the last word on me. Listen, that's a word right there, Ricky, and that is you can trust God's heart even when you cannot trace God's hand. I'll give you this last piece and I'm done, and that is in trusting God's heart when you can't trace God's hand. It simply means when you don't understand what's going on, you can stand in the truth that God is standing with you because God has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. God is with us through the fire, through the flood, through the storm, through the rain. God is with us. Listen, there are times I cannot trace God's hand, but I can trust God's heart. And since I can trust God's heart, I know God wants what's best for me. Since I can trust God's heart, I know God loves me and is looking out for me. Since I can trust God's heart, I know that somewhere, somehow, God is standing with me, even when I can understand what it is God is up to and I'm going through. I don't know about y'all, but I done made up my mind. I'm going to trust God's heart, even when I can't trace God's hand. I'm trusting our God. There it is, Pastor Haynes, man, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church. Let's get into this music. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Yes, Love you, Ricky. Have a great one. Yes, sir. You too. Let's go. All right, 13 minutes after the hour, got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. The front page is brought to you by Jazz in the Gardens. Miami Gardens, get ready. Jazz in the Gardens 2024 is a no-skips platinum playlist. March 9th through 10th, uh, through 10th, tickets are waiting. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Today is Super Tuesday. Voters are heading to the polls in 16 states, including Alabama, Arkansas, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. Now, state polls close at various times beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. While the presidential contest will receive a good amount of attention, there are several significant down-ballot races as uh, well since some states hold other primaries. So... Get out and vote today, y'all. Meanwhile, in in related news, the Supreme Court on Monday ruled that states cannot kick Donald Trump off the ballot over his actions leading up to the January 6th attack 
on the Capitol. The court reversed the Colorado Supreme Court, which had determined that Trump could not serve again as president under Section 3 of the Constitution's 14th Amendment. Lastly, Jeff Bezos has reclaimed the title of the richest person on Earth. He has surpassed Elon Musk. Now, according to Bloomberg Millionaires Index on Monday, y'all, the Amazon's founder, the Amazon founder's net worth was two hundred billion, with a B. Uh, Elon Damn. Musk came in closely behind Bezos with a net worth of one hundred and ninety-eight billion, with a B. Oh man, I know he. I know he said this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. you know the Tesla stock uh, <laughs> took a hit, and that's what messed him up. And so he only got one ninety-eight billion now. He, he only has a hundred and ninety-eight billion. Damn, that's not a go for uh, Elon Musk, man. <laughs> uh, Maria Moore, that's a quick uh huh rundown of today's news. For more stories and other headlines, visit RickySmileyMorningShow dot com. Rock T, what's going on in sports? What's up there, Maria? Well, we knew this was going to happen. Denver Broncos will be releasing quarterback Russell Wilson. Just the second year into his five-year deal that was worth $243 million. Broncos will take an $85 million hit on the chin to let Russell go ahead and move around a little bit. Potential teams that could be a good fit. Atlanta Falcons, Las Vegas Raiders, Minnesota possibly, New England. And my thing, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers could be the best spot. Get over there with uh, Mike Tomlin because they need a quarterback over there. He's 35 years old. Have we seen the best of Russell Wilson in the past? Uh, probably so, but we'll see what happens. From one Russell to another, L.A. Clipper star Russell Westbrook has surgery on his fractured left hand, so he's expected to miss the remainder of the regular season with the Clippers' hope to return back by the playoffs. It's a quick sports report right there. Bring it to Tech. Got the hot spot coming up next. Coming up next in the hot spot, Beyonce and Jay-Z made music's biggest real estate move. Up next, it's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the BRA 18. All right, 29 before the top of the hour time at the hot spot. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Well, y'all, Beyonce and Jay-Z made the biggest real estate move among musicians in 2023, according to a study by real estate experts at Agent Advice. Now, the couple purchased a Malibu mansion for just a measly $190 million, designed by Japanese architect Tadao Ando, making it the most expensive home ever sold in California. Now, check this out, y'all. The compound spans over eight acres, features a private beach, infinity pool, and zen water features. Sounds nice. Drake was nice. the second on the list with his Beverly Hills mansion listed for $88 million. Other celebrities like Rod Stewart, Cher, David Guetta, and Jennifer Lopez also made notable real estate deals in 2023. That house sound crazy. The Malibu mansion I bet it is sick. What? $190 million? I bet it sit on a cliff. Like when oh, you yeah. bend the curve, you sit right on that and cliff the, so you get the, that view. In the pool overlooking the ocean. The, you, you already know. Yeah. See how you call it a compound. You it ain't already, even going to be calling a house. It ain't even an estate no more. Yeah, it's, it's a, a compound. compound. <laughs> I mean, Jay-Z cut his own grass. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question thought, is that? Oh, I no. thought, hey, you know one of the nicest houses I've ever been in? Uh, right. Paula Dean house. And oh, I got, bet. Yeah, she I got bet. extra houses uh, right right, right in Savannah, Georgia. I'm talking about beautiful, the uh, yeah. ocean in the backyard. And I slept in the same house that Oprah slept in. I slept in the same bed that Oprah Winfrey slept in. Boy, I wrapped yeah. up in those sheets. I said, Lord, let some of these <laughs> blessings get on me. That Paula Dean paper long. I know it's nice. I Boy. know it was nice. All right, y'all, moving on. Gwyneth Paltrow is opening up about the differences that she noticed in relationships between the black and white women she knows. So during the chat, the Makers Conference in Beverly Hills, California, uh, Paltrow praised the incredible intrinsic self-honoring of her black women friends. She admits the black women friends know themselves, love themselves in a way that she thinks white women are not taught to. She said, I think white women are taught to be competitive with one another. Oh. I was like, really? This seems the same way we think about ourselves. But Paltrow went on to tell Belle that she believes white women have to learn from black women. She said, I've learned so much from my black friends about ruthless self-acceptance and full love of self. And I think we as white women in this culture 
culture have a lot to learn from our black sisters and the way in which they respect themselves. And I'm not sure exactly where that comes from. While she likely intended for these words to be uplifting, some people think she flat out missed the mark, y'all, especially within the African community. Uh, scores of online comments are ripping Gwyneth Paltrow for being blind they to the should, fact why, why? that black why, women are why, why, commonly... Why the internet always just got to go in on somebody <laughs> just because somebody don't say something perfectly or just the way you think it? I don't and then, know. And well, then she just gave her opinion. Right. No, no, you can't knowing, have an opinion these days. Sorry. Yeah, knowing that she, that she came from her heart and came from a, a good place or whatever now right. you know you you ruining a, I, don't, I don't i don't know i just they, don't understand if you don't say something perfectly when people know damn well what you meant exactly. they know what you meant right you know what i'm saying but everybody want to take everything and pick everything apart man that yep. internet is crazy but Rick, you know what it is the minute a white person says anything that pertains to black people we have a tendency to look for the racist comment to be a part of it and when it ain't and no it ain't, racist comment and it ain't always a racist you, you comment. still try to find something wrong so, uh, yeah, they said uh, <laughs> she's being ripped for being blind to the fact that when black women are commonly pitted against each other in the pop culture and American society at large. But, but why, she don't why know that. She's, How does she she's pointing to know that? out something positive that she sees. That she her right. experience. Right. Her experience. With her, with her friends. Her black friends. Exactly. Right. So, oh, Lord. Yeah. So this, this Man, is, people this, make me sick with that. what we do. <laughs> It's all good though. You can only you can only talk about what you personally experience. She's not in the black culture. She you don't can't know even that. Do that. You can't even do that. All right, y'all. We're gonna wrap up the hot spot on that note, but we're gonna keep Gwyneth Paltrow and all her haters in your prayers. Uh coming up next, y'all, we got the wake up calls. I always say that because it really ain't up next. But hit us up anyway at 8669 Ricky. That's 8669 R-I-C-K-E-Y. The time now is 25 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Good morning, Ricky. So a 33-year-old man is facing an attempted grand grand theft auto charge after trying and failing to steal a self-driving taxi in downtown L.A. on Saturday night. So the guy actually held the Waymo car, apparently knowing that it was fully autonomous. But instead of just riding in the car, he climbed into the driver's seat and tried to hijack it by putting the car in drive. But it doesn't work like that. So get this, y'all. Waymo realized he was trying to mess with the car, so a representative started talking to him through the car's speakers and told him to leave. He wouldn't, so the rep called the cops. He was still inside the car when police arrived to arrest him. Now, it's unclear whether it locked him inside or if he was still trying to gain control of the car. Yeah, should have locked him inside and took him straight to the police station. Yeah. Just sat that would have been laughed at him, and, and then and then turn the cameras on and then get it all on video. The car need to have a whole Instagram page. Have him in that, have him in that acting a fool by himself. Yep. And and get out at the police station, boy. That's some. Would you all up. ride in a self driving taxi? No, in New no. York, no. downtown, I would downtown New York. I wouldn't do it uh, on 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 no two eighty five or no on ninety five on no highway. Mm-mm. Hell no, oh, but but crash on the regular street. Even in Midtown York Manhattan, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It might, it might, but but you ain't you ain't going fast like downtown New York. It's it's bumper to bumper. I'm all, I love rush hour traffic because I feel safe. I don't feel safe on an open highway when a Hellcat come past you doing 120. Mm-hmm. That scares the hell out of me. But but rush hour traffic, I go get right on in that rush hour traffic and get to where I'm going safe because it be bumper to bumper and it don't be crazy. You can't go fast. And all that kind of stuff. I, I, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but the way people drive today, or whatever. But I, I wouldn't jump on that. Not not trust nobody to take me no at no seventy miles per hour with nobody. I don't up like there. that the car can lock like someone else can control the car. Like if somebody remotely decides they want to lock you inside of the car, it makes me well, think of that scene. I think it was like Superman where he was going to save the lady and the the water was get, being filled up inside of the yeah. car and she couldn't get out. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, then then when, come when he control. flew back around and made the yeah. world spin backwards, boy, yeah, he won one of those. <laughs> boy, she has some, she has some, some fire boy. He makes, but anyway, oh, the original <laughs> Superman. <laughs> it's a little early for that. Okay. <laughs> and I don't play that friendly shit in church either. Man. I don't play that friendly shit in church. We sit, we sit up in church. The pastor say, "Turn to your neighbor." I'm like. <laughs> He say, turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. I turn to her, she turned to the next mother. It's about God is good. Hey, turn your ass around, man. Hey, like, scoot down, my nigga. Yeah, scoot, this is a vacant lot, G. We ain't got no neighbors, dog.
man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. Mm-mm, it's Gary, baby. It's Gary. Good morning. Oh, oh, good morning. <laughs> Get together. I know, and you be trying, you be thinking you guys together, yeah. and that damn mic just trick you, honey. Good morning, good, good morning, Ricky. Come on. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Tennis superstar Serena Williams, y'all. This girl is going viral. I don't know if y'all heard the shocking news, but they're saying, y'all, that she was seen on a video with a bizarre new face, honey. And they are saying, y'all, that that face resembles a lion. Yes, honey, they're saying Serena attended Fashion Week in Paris, and they say she gave an interview. But they're saying most of the listeners found it hard, y'all, to listen to what Serena was saying because they said she had this strange look on her face. They're saying everyone is critical of Serena's new um, look. Now, a bunch of Twitter activists, y'all, are blaming, listen to this, and I kind of agree with them, black men for bullying the tennis star into changing her appearance. Now, they're saying, according to those activists, they say it's not Serena, but black men that are to blame, honey, for her disturbing new lion face. Now, there's somebody said, y'all bullied this woman, honey, relentlessly, relentlessly, y'all, for years on end. I fully support anything she's done to make herself pretty, y'all, whether the public likes it or not. You all have been the most nasty, vile, disrespectful, and dehumanizing MLs when it comes to her and her black features. Who said this? That's what um, people are saying, honey. Uh, 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 one of the listeners and viewers said this, honey, about Serena, honey. So, you know, and it's sad, Ricky, because, I mean, she, her face does look different. They pulled up some before and after looks, honey, and it does look kind of lion is she? So, Whatever honey, she yeah. have to do, to, 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 for, for whatever reason she do it, it's her prerogative, and I'm not in a position to judge. And no. I can understand, and, and I can understand, because people are mean on the Internet. They, they find are. anything and everything. And it's just nasty and vile, and I just hate that uh, mm-hmm. that people are able to come on and, and leave comments and, and and just do what they did. Everybody just do what they want to do, and right. there's no consequence. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, so we just got to keep Serena lifted up in prayer, honey. And, you know, she got her good husband, so. What is lion is she? It looks, lion, kind of, it looks like a lion, you know, lionish. It looks, a lioness. I don't yeah. think she's done nothing to her face. She, she she don't even like surgeries and stuff like that. And she be mm-hmm. sick sometimes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Well, she's uh, kind of looking a little lionish. Well, I tell you what, she, she's a legend. And I'm, I'm yeah, proud of is. everything that she has accomplished. And me too. Absolutely. And I tell you what. And we support her what, over here. Yeah, my grandkids will be playing tennis. Come I, on, I'm, man. In, I'm inspired. They will be out there with a damn tennis racket That's and, right. and trying to be the best that they could be. And yeah. uh, and I hope they get to meet her and her sister uh, one day. They so sweet. Yes, they are. We yeah. love Serena and Venus, honey. And speaking of legends, honey, Russell Simmons, honey, and Usher, honey, are enjoying time together and staying in Bali, y'all. Now everybody's raving about that. They're saying, according to Russell, Usher surprised the hip hop mogul by secretly coming to his home in the Indonesian city. Now, according to Russell, honey, they're saying Usher snuck into um, Russell's mansion, and when he woke up, Usher was sitting by his seat, beside his bed, shirtless. Now, Russell explained, now, when I was at the lowest point in my life, I woke up, and this man was sitting, honey, by my bed. He said, I had known Usher since he was a kid, but we really bonded because of our mutual love for self-discovery and our belief in yogic science as a direct route to realizing God's consciousness in ourselves, Russell mm-hmm. continued. And they say, people remember, uh, people, he said, quote, people remember to remember this, a uh, Friend, honey, walks in when others walk out. I will never forget the generosity of spirit I witnessed in this man. God bless you, brother Usher. Love you. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah that, is. that is. Beautiful. It's always great to have a friend like that. Yes, Lord, yeah. honey. I mean, and you know, I mean, Russell, didn't Russell kind of like, he didn't give him his start, though, huh? He was in hip hop. No, but he know? was in his life, you know. Yeah. As a mentor. Yeah, growing up in the industry. And that's good. I mean, Usher just went to Indonesia, honey, and just got in the house, honey, and just sat by his bed with no shirt on. That was really nice. Well, you well, know, we you know Russell you Simmons. Yoga. Yeah, yeah go he's, ahead. He's Rocky. really big in yoga, and mm-hmm. he probably was like, okay, I'm ready for my, my yoga session. You know, he's probably mm-hmm. that's probably why he went to say, hey, man, let me go kind of clear my mind and get ready for the vacation. next phase of my life. Vacation. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Well, congratulations to him, y'all. And in, another, in a sad note, y'all, let's continue to pray, y'all, for Nicole Murphy. I don't know if y'all heard the shocking story, but Nicole Murphy's boyfriend passed away suddenly, y'all of aggressive cancer. So we're going to oh, keep Nicole, no. yeah, we're going to keep her lifted up in our prayer. His name was Warren Bright, Brightweight, and they say he passed away from a sudden and aggressive bout of cancer. So we're going to keep Nicole and, you know, the family lifted up in prayer. 
All right, the Kahlua today is one of my favorite Kahlua. My Kahlua today, y'all, is eucalyptus. On the high end, you say eucalyptus, oh. and on the low end, you say beautiful blue-green. That's your Kahlua for today. That's All nice, right. Gary. Y'all mm-hmm. give it up for Gary with the T. Gary! Oh. All right, y'all, Rick's not a morning show. I got oh. your way up, y'all. Whoa! Hey, get at me, 8669 Ricky. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. calling from Lima, and I want to give a wake-up call to Darlene Dillard, Belle Lipskin, and Katrina Martin. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is Paul Big Chris calling from Shelby, North Carolina. To all the people in North Carolina who has just voted, wake up, wake up, wake up. Get your butt set. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Carol calling from Miami, and I want to wish everybody a happy 305 day coming straight from Miami Day County. D. Jeremiah White here from Flint, Michigan, telling all my nieces and nephews to wake up. The whole gang of cities tuned in, lock in. What's yours? Because we gon' let them know. Let them know. Yeah. Kansas City, wake up. In Columbus, wake up. All right, y'all, I got a hilarious prank phone call from Roy Wood Jr. You don't want to miss that. Up next, Rick's Mind the Morning Show. Hello? Yes, who is this? Who is this? I'm calling my man. I'm going through numbers in my man's cell phone. I want to know who is this. Well, I don't know who the hell it's supposed to be. Baby, this is Victor, and I want to know who the hell is going on. Well, I, whatever I, the hell is going on, I don't give a damn what's going on. Ain't is no this- Call. Is this Betty? If it is Betty, what the f is it to you? Baby, that's that, that's my man. That's Rome. I, what what you doing in Rome's oh, house, baby? No m- Rome. How long y'all been together? Cause we've been together for two years. Why are you calling me? Because I want to know what's going on. This is my man. Who is your man? Rome is my man. Well, you need to talk to Rome, baby. Mom, uh, baby, I'm, I'm not with Rome. Baby, I'm talking to you. You need to talk to her. Betty, I'm talking to the right one. You must got me all twisted. Well, now, evidently, you must be twisted if you with Rome. You better, you better watch your mouth. No, you I better tell watch you that. your mouth. Where, 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 where you stay at? Don't worry about where I stay at. I can, call I can, him, I look can, it up. I can meet you. Look it up. You're going to get slapped, helper. I look promise you. Look it up, you. B-I- Look it up. I got your B-I-, I, got your B-I- too. I got some lace drawers for your munch I'm going to I'm gonna rub these f- all in your face. <laughs> Go ahead. Hit your child. Say what? I'm going to hit your child. Okay, well, hit her. And bring your ass up and see what we're going to do about well, that. Well, you bring your ass. You ain't going to f*** with my f- child. Hold on. Let me speak to her. Hello? Hello? You ain't going to talk to my man like that. Now, I who is this? I your man. Who is this? This is this is Leonard. Who in the hell is Leonard? Baby, this is Leonard, baby. And don't get slapped now. We was no, just calling to let slapped. you that that Rome is ours. I don't care. Rome is ours. I don't give a damn. Rome could be whoever the hell his flop mouth ass baby, wanna be with. Baby, Rome took us to a Birmingham. I don't give a. He took us to a West End Inslee football yeah, game okay, because he loves good. us. Oh, I love it. I don't give a damn. Take a book, type of type of letter. I don't give a damn. Cuss that out. Cuss your ass out. Betty. What? Betty, what? I will what? come to New Unity and slap you in the middle well, of communion. Bring your ass on to New Unity. I will. Come on. I will slap you and, baby, I will slap you and, I will slap you and, let me finish, heifer. You come on, you shouldn't have to let me, I shouldn't have to let you finish. She don't know who she's dealing with, I'm straight out the street. She don't know, baby, chill out, baby. Victor, it's okay, Victor. I'm finna hang the f*** up, whoever this is playing on my f*** damn telephone. Betty, it's Roy Wood Jr. Right to them! (laughs) Yes, sir, hey, uh, Black Tony, you going, uh, are, are you going to vote? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm finna, yeah, I'm finna vote. I'm finna vote. I, I want, I'm trying to get Obama back, you know. I'm trying to get, get Obama, Obama back, you know. Wait, as president? Vote, yeah. Can't serve yeah, yeah, eight like, years, I like, bro. I like, I like having him in though. He, he did good. Oh, um, hey, Black Tone. What? Can't serve for eight years, man. He can't run again. He can't run again. Now he can run for Senate. Okay. Well, I, I vote for that then. <sighs> I ain't gonna make it today, Shouting. I'm letting you know that right now. Uh, on another, on another, uh, no, on another, uh, uh subject. On Super Tuesday, you ain't coming to work. 
No, shut up. I can't. I can't. Are, that, you, are you taking a sick day or a personal no, day? No, I ain't taking now. Though. I'm trying to get there, but I'm, I might get there late. Cause, um, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to count as something. It's going to count as something. I might, get there, I might get there late, though, because I'm trying to, I've been trying to come, but something happened in the morning. I can't, I can't, I can't get over well, there. Listen, what if something happened to Sorry, everybody? Unless you, send, Sorry, unless you send me a Uber, I can't get over, though. Let me put it that way. Let me, let me say it like that. Now, if you can send me a Uber, I'll come. But well, if you can't send me no Uber, I ain't coming. Send me, your, send me your location. Send me your location. I can't. I ain't got that kind of phone. But look, um, <laughs> yeah. Send, send. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you my. I'll get you a pencil. I'm gonna give you my grandma my address. Send me a U over here. I can't drive my car cause my dog. Right, man. What happened? Come on, man. You make too many man. excuses, bro. No, shout it. Look, my my key, my keys had fell out the uh, had fell off um or the carpet table and fell into the dog uh food bowl and he ate. This dog done swallowed my damn car key, man. I just got my Escalade out the shop. You know, I still got my 92 Escalade with a the five damn, speed. The dogs don't eat no damn car keys. Shout it, my they, dog they'll eat, eat your, they'll eat your homework, but not no car keys. Shout it, he a pit bull mixed with a great thing, mixed with a rockwaller, mixed with a poodle. He, he, he eat everything, shout it. Dogs don't eat no, I ain't keys. never seen no dog eat no car keys. Like okay, pet. well, well, I guess he need to be. Uh, well, he need to be on 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 YouTube then. Well, put the he, dog he in. Put the dog head. in the car. Don't you have one of those keys? Like if the, the car start, if the key no, is in the car. Put... No, I'm waiting for. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it to come out. Cause I ain't finna get no another key made. I called them folks, asked them how much to get a key made. They said it like two hundred dollars. So on um, they. So I'm waiting for him. Waiting for it to come out. We just gave. I just gave him a melt. I melted down a snicker bar and gave it to him. Give him some X lax or something. You know? I gave him a, a snickle bar. Ain't, ain't nobody got no insulet. I gave him a snickle bar. <laughs> See, he me- so I melted the snickle bar. Uh, that'll, that'll blow him. That'll blow him out. I'm waiting. I'm sitting here waiting on him. He just sitting there looking at me. I'm looking at him. I'm like, I need, it gonna come. That stomach yeah. gonna start rumbling in a minute, shout it. And yeah, when it come dog, out, I'm gonna get my keys and rinse them off, and, and I'm, I'm, I'll be over there. That dog gonna have a baboon's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be over there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was under the Brat Shower Chronicles. <laughs> Hold it! He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I wanna hip you to the teeth. Mm-mm, it's Gary, baby. Gary, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning, New Year's Tuesday. A beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. TLC's Rosanda Chili Thomas, y'all. They're saying she is officially a grandma. Now, they're saying Chili 53 and her boyfriend, Matthew Lawrence, 44, were spotted y'all in Los Angeles after her son, Tron Austin, welcomed a beautiful baby girl with his beautiful wife, Miss Jiang Ang Wang. Now, they're saying Tron 26, y'all, shared an adorable photo photo of his newborn daughter on his Instagram. The proud papa captioned the photo on this day, y'all. Um, an angel from heaven was born. Our beautiful daughter, y'all, Luau. We are officially parents, honey. And he went on to say that he is so um, beyond proud, honey, of his wife's bravery and courage to do this so off guard. And they literally expected three more um, days. But God always has his plan first. Eternally grateful to say we are and officially have started our family. Isn't that nice? She's a grandmother, but a lot of people say, no, she lives an old grandmother, honey. I mean, because she's 53 years old, and, you know, that's, I mean, she's... That's not yeah. old. Yes, it is, because most grandmothers today are 30. So, I mean, hell, <laughs> she... <laughs> Oh, my wife's a grandmother and she's 51. Yeah, well, they say she's an old grandmother, honey, but that's good. Congratulations to her and her son, honey. He has that, you know, her first you say the grandma's 30, girl. They 30, Ricky. They say, hell, she got old 53. Grandma trying to go to the club. Okay. <laughs> Great so, grandma, I'm a 42. Okay. Right. So congratulations, Dang. honey, to Chili, y'all. 
All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. Jonathan Majors and his beautiful girlfriend, Ms. Megan Good, y'all, they made their first public appearance, y'all, um, in two months at the AAFCA Special Achievement Awards luncheon on, on Sunday. Now, they're saying y'all that the happy couple... with him. I'm getting there. Yes, sir, honey. They say they made their appearance at the um the um luncheon held at the Los Angeles Athletic Club in Los Angeles. Now, they say when they asked, honey, how they were doing, Majors said, in love. He said they were in love. We're doing good. Thanks for asking. And Ms. Megan asked, we're doing great. God's good, honey. And they went on, you know, and to um, talk. They say he's living with her in her beautiful um, Greenwich Village um, um, neighborhood in New York City. They said they're solid and very much in love. Yes, Ricky, she is sticking with him. Now, I just oh, yeah. still ask the question, honey. I mean, had he um, not been in all that trouble with that European woman, honey, would he be with Miss Good, honey, or whatever? But, you know, it's Women History Month, and women do stick by their men, honey, especially um, black women and black men. So I guess... You know, they in love, like she said. So, but it's very interesting. But he goes mm. back to um court. He go on trial, honey, on April the eighth. So, you know, they can stick together. Hopefully, they don't put him in the pen. But he's going back because you know he was um charged or what have you. So, we gotta see how this situation turn out, though. But I still don't understand how they felt so much in love. But you know, they did. Yeah, so. man, you gotta put in that work when you ain't got no job, boy. You sure do, honey. He gotta clean. He gotta wash your clothes, wash your food, feet, everything. As soon as he everything. get home from work, honey. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> so he gotta, gotta hold do it on. All. All right. But she fine, too. I hold yeah. on to her, dog. Yeah, I still want to know why she left the pastor, though. And nobody's talking about it, you know. I so. thought they are. Uh, it was so long me, ago. Me, yeah. Huh? We, we don't even so remember how ago. they broke up. Right. I know. That's what I'm saying. Nobody knows. So, you know, I mean, if you're a pastor, if you preach it like you know the Lord would have told you that this woman was going to leave you or how the situation goes, don't the Lord speak to you? Anybody know? Okay. <laughs> Moving on. In my final story, y'all. Miley Cyrus, baby. Oh, y'all know Miley Cyrus. We all know uh, Miley. Baby, Miley Cyrus is speaking out, baby. She said she had no idea, honey, that her mama's new husband was having a relationship with her younger sister. Oh. Yes, baby. Miss Cyrus apparently had no clue that her mother's new husband had a previous relationship with her younger sister, Noah Cyrus. Wait a minute. Not yeah, according to Inside, they say the singer actress Miley Cyrus had no idea about the trouble surrounding her sister Noah Cyrus' mother, Tish Cyrus, and her mom's new husband, actor Dominic Purcell. Now, last week they said it was alleged that the entertainer's younger sister Noah, 24, and Dominique Purcell, 54, dated before his marriage to her mama Tish, 56. Now, they said the pair reportedly tied the night in Miley Cyrus' beautiful backyard, who um, was the maid of honor in the ceremony. Back in August of 2023, they say when the news of the so-called um, love triangle broke, a source claimed y'all that Noah was offended, honey, that her mother married um, Dominic Purcell following her fling with the prison break actor, which seems to be the reason why Noah did not attend a, a ceremony. Ooh, Noah did not what? go to her mama wed because the mama started sleeping with her husband. What in the redneck Man. trailer park hell is going on? Yeah, but I mean, but you know, they <laughs> say... But when you love somebody, the, the, so, should it wait, matter? Wait, wait. So Noah, the guy Noah was with the daughter first. Yeah, yeah. Noah and, is the and, daughter. Noah is the girl. Noah is um, 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 Miley's sister. Right. And Noah was dating her mama, now husband, Dominique. Oh, that's some redneck trailer park stuff there, right there. You think? I mean, oh, that's, so the sister yeah. had him first. Yeah, the sister had him first, but he looked good. So then, the, then the mama, mama then took, snatched him up, and married him. Yeah. Ooh. Is it anything yeah. wrong with that? Because the day didn't work out. That. That's trifling. No, that's a lot wrong with that. That's that yeah. mean why he think? was. That mean why he was parading around the house. The yeah. mama was checking him out. Come on now. Well, yeah. What but in the, the Jermaine Jackson is going on? What in the uh, yeah. uh, Reby Latoya, uh, Janet, and all of them is going on? Yeah, but the, but no, I mean, but honey, she ain't number twenty four. He's fifty four, so he don't want no young girl. He wanted an older woman. So he got mm. with the mama. Mm. The but, mama fifty six. So it's almost like he got in the house because with yeah. the younger girl, if your girl and he stayed in the house. Then you take her friend. So oh, that's, that's not her friend though. That's her mama. Yeah, I don't know. That's trifling. Told All right, the Kahlua. Them, them, them gray jogging pants be working. <laughs> <laughs> the Kahlua today, y'all, you can lift this on the high. You say you can lift this on the lawn. Just say blue green. That's your Kahlua for the day, honey. So, mm -mm. Lord Jesus. Yes, oh, that was real messy. Y'all give it up for Gary with the team. <laughs> Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Hey, listen, it always feels nice to give back to those who pour into you in many cultures, but there's a strong expectation to support your parents as they age. And while it's a beautiful thing uh, to take care of them as, you know, as they took care of you, it can sometimes become very complicated.
Right, Ricky. A woman went viral after uh, asking for advice after she decided to give her mother and father $1,300 a month to help cover the bill since they recently retired. Now, after a year, the woman noticed that two to $300 would be transferred out of the account every month. And when she asked her parents about it, she said that her brother, uh, they said that her brother was having difficulties with his budget, so they're helping him out. So that may make sense on the surface, but here's the issue. The woman says her brother is a scholarship student who receives a stipend in London. She said there's no problem with his budget. He simply simply wants more money uh, to party with his friends. So she reduced the amount of money she gives to her parents by $300 a month. She said if they can afford to give it away every month, then they don't need it. But her mom called upset, but the daughter explained herself. Now the money was for her parents not a fun for her brother. <laughs> uh, so this morning we want to know if you give some someone money, is it okay uh, to judge how they spend it? Brett, what's your thought on that? Uh, you can't really do that. You can't really judge how they spend it. Once you give it away to them, you got to let them do what they're going to do with it. My granny used to pass out all the money I gave her at church. Are you No, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, she did. I didn't find out to her funeral, but everybody got up and said, Mother Polk always gave us a handful of money every time. I was like, that's where all my money was going. (laughs) Can't do nothing about it, though. She got a sweetheart. It is what it is. Yeah, she made sure everybody had a little something. Everybody had a little something. (laughs) I kind of agree with the daughter on this one. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. but once you give it, you can't, you can't. Right. Only because they're using it to to take care of her brother, and you don't know. Maybe her brother's trifling. I don't know. She might feel like you know. Once it leave your then, hands, it, I'm sorry. Then, go ahead. Yeah, no. I was just about to say. You know. You know. The grandparents. Uh, they don't. They don't set boundaries. They have them kids that they spoil or whatever. And then we kind of like, no, let them go get a job so they can uh pay for their own way to the club and to the concert. Because you feel like you're paying for it. I agree, yeah. too. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't agree with that. My thing is, honey, I supplement my mama's income. And I told her, after when my daddy died, and, you know, and I helped supplement her income, I could give you money, I could help you out. But one thing you can't do, you can't go to the casinos with it. Because they used to go to the casino. And you're not going to take my oh, money yeah. and gamble with it because I don't gamble. But that's not fair. Yes, it is fair, honey. If you think I'm going to get a That's she's going to go anyway and just not tell you. Well, she just, well, I'd rather that then. Because I'm not going to give you money and you're going to go gambling, honey, hard as I work but and I'm trying to help you. she's having a good time. That's, she's enjoying herself. Well, girl, I, no, I don't mind her going to bingo. Bingo is different. You don't How lose you your money. choose what sport she go to. bingo, right. you don't lose the money as quick. But <laughs> casinos, honey, you lose that money and people be jumping off bridges and committing suicide and depressed because they lose all their damn money at the um, casino. No, ma'am, honey. You could go to bingo, but you cannot go to the casino and, and play with the money. So no, And you well, can't give it to my brothers, neither. You should have been a father and not a son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, I see your mama trying to get up on a bridge to jump off with them white kitty heels on them black stockings. <laughs> I'm going to pull my carvers and Miss Hayes get down. What, what do y'all, uh, uh, I, I just, I just, Rock, what, what are your thoughts? Man, it, it's some. she obviously know that her brother may be a little immature with, when it comes to spending money, so I'm almost with the sister here, like, okay, mom and dad, I'm going to take care of you, but you know, your son You know what you do? What's that? No, 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 you know what you, I just thought about, I ain't mean to cut you, I apologize. Rock, yeah. just pay the bills direct. See, I see the type of person I am. If I see that you're irresponsible, I, instead of giving you money, I just find out what bills are uh, you using with the money and just pay those bills direct. I got I got a couple of folks where I just kind of had to stop and just pay the bills direct or whatever, you know, uh, and then whatever uh, extra money that you get, you go do what you want to with it, with your own Social Security check or, or whatever money you get. Here's the the bill. I'm gonna pay this light bill and this water bill, and and these this other little stuff, and pay it direct. And then they that'll that'll help them with not being uh, irresponsible. Do y'all follow me? That's- yeah, but I just want you to have a little bit of money. Now I could pay your bill direct, but I want you to have a little bit of money left to have. But still, don't just blow it and just give it away and do something with it. Uh uh-uh. uh. And I know my mama bank account because I monitor it, so I make sure. Uh, yeah, and I think there's another is. layer to it as well because you think about your parents; they took care of you your whole life. If I give you a thousand dollars, do whatever you want to do. No with man, thousand dollars. Yes, yes. I mean, you can't you can't watch it a month. That's not fair to them. Yeah, but you can't just throw away money like that. That's, that's not, it's fair not throwing to it away right. though. They're adults. It's, Investing back into the people who raised you. Yeah, I right. mean, you want to hear something? To them, but, mm-hmm. Y'all want to hear something? And Gary, what? and Gary, know this. 
You know me and granddaddy had a joint bank account my whole yeah. life until he died. Wow. Yeah. I'm talking about every dime I have to my name, everything. My granddaddy, it was, it, I mean, me and my granddaddy was business partners uh, since I was, since I started out cutting grass. And my mm-hmm. granddaddy blew my phone up asking me, can he get $13? He said, Rick, I'm, I don't like to bother your money. I just need to get $13 over here. <laughs> I'm about to go over here and get this dog food. So it was, it was something. So I said, Granddaddy, just, you good? Just, I started laughing. I said, mm-hmm. just remember that night we did karaoke at, yeah. uh, at Maxwell Rock Team? Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> I think I had like I had, I think I had like $3,600 in, in fives and tens. My granddaddy was going back to Birmingham and I gave him all that cash to take back through the airport. Boy, you talking about nervous? <laughs> He went to the TSA Aww. and they pulled all that money out. My granddaddy <laughs> thought he was going to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all get out of this 8669. Ricky, good morning. This is Peaches calling from Albany. If I give somebody some money, they can spend it however they want to and vice versa. You give me some money, I'm going to do what I want to do with it. They f- My name is Mia Mims and I'm calling from Indianapolis, Indiana. I would say yes. And for the simple thing, it's because it's my money. And um, if they're not, especially if it's with my parents, well, yeah, if it's my parents, I, I, I will say it's my money and I can tell them how much allowance that they get or why they ain't spending it the way that they should. Good morning. My name is Ty. I'm calling from Atlanta. And I do feel like if I give something from the goodness of my heart and if I'm helping out my parents, yes, I think I do have a say so on how they spend it because I'm not going to support their bad habits. I'm calling from Flint, Michigan, and I believe if I told them that I was using it for something, then they have a right to dictate, but if they just giving it to me to use, then no, they don't. Yes, I feel like if they're going to mess it up, then I can use that for myself and do something that I need to be done. I mean, who wants to give somebody something to waste? All right, y'all. <laughs> if y'all cannot get through, y'all hit us up on the website. We got Jeff Johnson up next, Rick's Line of Morning Show. All right, Rick's Mountain Morning Show. It is election day. We got the one and only Jeff Johnson on with us this morning. He got three things that you need to know. What up, Jeff? What's up, good sir? How are you? What up, Jeff? Man, bless and highly favorite. Happy to have you. Hey, what's up, what's up? Man, I'm good to be on, even though I'm not totally happy with what I have to talk about. Um, I believe, and, and, and somewhere I thought that um, despite these being Trump appointed justices, that the Supreme Court was going to err on the side of the Constitution and not on the side of the president. Um, For those of you that have been paying attention, um, Trump won a huge battle in his ability to be on the ballot in um, Colorado. Um, The justices essentially said that the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which which says no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or the elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military under the United States or any other state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. A Congress may, by a vote of two thirds of each house, remove such disability. Ultimately, what this section says, and and I'm not an attorney, but it says that if you are a part of an insurrection, you cannot hold office. Right. And what the justices said was that it's Congress's responsibility. But if you read this, it says that the Congress has the ability to remove that person. It doesn't say it's Congress's responsibility to make them ineligible. And so this is this is not really just about Trump. This is about the Supreme Court has literally just upheld an insurrection. And they have said that it is justifiable to be involved in an insurrection and still hold the highest office in the land. And so we as a country are in an unbelievably sad place when the very fabric, there, there was a time when many of us believed that with all of its, um, with all of its imperfections and with all of its um, vestiges of 
of, of the foundation of the country and slavery, that even responsible Republicans were willing to uphold the Constitution um, before they were willing to be engaged in uh, this level of politics. And we have passed that day. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we clearly understand, Rick, um, what this decision potentially sets precedent for. Hey, but Jim, what we know it sets precedent. Yeah. Does it does, does it basically mean that in layman's terms, if Biden was to incite the same exact thing that Trump did on January 6th, that they got to let him slide with it, too? Yeah. Because it's OK now, right? Yes. Yeah. Or they've at least created legal precedent for it to be. So it's it's it. I mean, this is this is terrible. Um, but what it means also most immediately is that the other states that have removed him from the ballot or states that were thinking about removing him from the ballot will not have the legal grounds to do so. And they will likely um, those local Supreme Court, those state Supreme Courts will ultimately um, support this ruling. And so. Trump will likely be on the ballot in every state um, unless there are states that don't appeal um, where he's been removed. And so this this is a this is a tough one, man, because this is this is not just about Trump. This is about the continued disintegration of rights that were created post Reconstruction that were really about um, maintaining the rights of American citizens. And we're chipping away at it every single day. In the name of this narcissist, dare I say, fascist, becoming president of the United States again. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and the whole immunity thing. You know, that that's another thing that they're not really thinking through because if they say that Trump deserves immunity, first of all, he's the first president out of forty-six of them that has felt the need to do it because they've never had another president that felt like they needed immunity. So that's saying one thing, but doesn't that also extend to Joe Biden if they say? He gets immunity, and then all right. So now Joe Biden becomes a king. Well, and that and that and that that right there, that right there, Kay, is it? You, we we were supposed to be in a place where even the president of the United States wasn't above the law, and when you do that, you no longer have a democracy. At 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 best, you have a monarchy, and at worst, you have a dictatorship. So what 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 so fourth uh, uh, Supreme Court justice uh, sided with the uh, with the with the three with the other three uh, all of them? Oh, it was all of them. Yeah. Nine zero. Yeah, Nine and zero. and then it was and then it was and then it was split five four on the decision around um, section three. Oh wow! Yeah, man. Maybe it's this, something this is, in the wall that I don't know. Yeah. So, so I, I, I know that there will be more and more conversation about this decision and, and its implications. But most immediately for the 2024 election, what it, I, I, I shudder to think um, folks that are going to continue to try to get him off the ballot in their state when the Supreme Court has essentially said even those efforts will be overturned. Um, and and, and that's why level. people got to get out and vote. Like today is Super Tuesday. And uh, there's a lot of elections going on in all, you know, in uh, uh, well, a lot and, of states. And, and that's what I was going to say, too, Rick, that 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 this is not just these primaries are not just about the president. Um, so there are a lot of folks on the ballot um, in in Congress and in the Senate. Um, and so I, I say this to people. You should not have to be excited to vote. Um, no other country in the world has to be excited about who's on the ballot to turn out, because no matter Who's on the ballot? Laws are going to get passed, money's going to get spent, and judges are going to get appointed. And so, Rick, we we as a country have got to stop being so sophomoric and juvenile in how we think about elections. Um, you don't have to trust the system to know that the system impacts you. You don't have to like the people on the ballot to know that whoever wins is going to affect your family's life. You don't have to trust those people to trust that that they are going to pass laws, spend money, and appoint judges. And if you want to say in that, whether you trust it or not, you've got to go to the polls. So I, I respect everybody's right to choose what they do. That's the truest sense of a democracy. But what I think is more a sense of democracy is when you feel a level of obligation to be involved in the process that's ultimately going to affect you and your family. 
Man, that is, that's good stuff right there, Jeff. All right, Jeff, let everybody know how you can be reached. Y'all hit, hit me at Jeff's Nation on IG. Um, let, let me know why you're voting, because um, I'm, I'm just curious. There's so much that's going to be happening this week that I'm going to talk to you about on Thursday. But uh, just want to know why. Hit me at Jeff's Nation on IG. Love y'all. Always good to be with you all. Have a great day. I'll talk to y'all on Thursday. Hey, man, love you too, Jeff, and always appreciate having you on. Listen, we got the mix that'll stay in your head all day. Coming up next, we can smile the morning show. Hey, you like that yes, song, Kiki? Yes, I do. Kiki. Strawberry. Strawberry. People, you, that's what I like. That's what I like, boy. Yeah. Kiki, I'm going to hey, be in South Florida this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to say that your boy Special K. Yeah. Oh. You know who Special this is. Special K. Oh, what's up? Kiki, I'm going to be in South. I'm, Kiki, I'm coming down for Jazz in the Garden this weekend. What's up? You coming for what? Jazz in the Gardens. Jazz, man. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> no, Jazz, 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 jazz in the Garden. Jazz that, that's going to be off the chain. We're going to have a good time with Jazz yeah. in the Garden. I got a room and everything. You got what? Hold on. A room. <laughs> Is you trying to go? <laughs> yeah. You got to No. Well, how Natasha, you know? how Natasha, you, you know I got you some tickets. Ask Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Ricky. Natasha. Oh, girl, give me the phone. What's up? Fantastic. I got you some tickets. I got you two tickets to Jazz at the Gardens, and I got one for the Kiki. Girl, you hear that? Yes. So, you know what that means. <laughs> so many goons coming from the front So many goons. So many goons coming from the front end. So many. No. Now, hold on. Rick, you think I'll be having vendors selling food? You know that's what I go for. Fantastic. Uh, they got food. all. The food trucks be lined up all the way across oh, uh, uh, the, oh. whole yeah. the whole parking lot. The whole parking lot. The whole parking lot, that does. There's going to be food in the garden. <laughs> yeah. Food in the garden. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get hey, hey, early. I'm going to Huh? Hey, Special K, who all on the show for Jazz in the Garden? And I, uh, oh, oh, man, you talking about Jasmine Sullivan, Kirk Franklin, uh, Fantasia. Kirk. Baby face, uh, hey, hey Kiki, don't you like don't you like our uh, Kurt Franklin and Kiki? Yes. Oh my God, he loves you more than you love know. The devil's a liar. The angel of the Don't take us to never, never. Let come on. Our people say, God prophecy. Some of y'all think gospel music is going too far. Yes. Make you wilder. <laughs> we be singing it together in the car. It make you wilder. <laughs> that is. Hey, hey, well, uh, who else gonna be that special case? Uh, man, October London gonna be there. Uh, uh, Tasha, uh, uh, don't you like October London? I love October London. I'm, I'm pulling up. You talking about fast taste. Don't walk me, dude. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Rick Ross, the boss, gonna be there. Hey, wait, wait, uh-huh. Fantasia. What, what Fantasia be singing, Fantasia? She be like. Don't want me, then don't talk to me. <laughs> go ahead, treat your, go ahead. Oh, don't want me, then don't talk to me. Hey, <laughs> hey Fantasia, B A, B A, B A, B A, B A, I'm be so loud, lit out there. Yeah, jazz do, in the garden. Yeah, do Thank not you, miss man. do do not miss jazz in the garden this weekend. Uh, Fat Tasha, uh, y'all meet me over there. Uh, meet me around eleven. I bring y'all tickets up. Meet me at Wawa. Where the Wawa? That's ain't no more. I'm I'm in front of that right now. Wait, no, y'all. The, the Lord led me to Wawa. He must do. I don't. I'm looking to get some a piece of wings this morning. Some pizza. Some stomach. I don't care about my stomach this morning. Get some glazed donuts. Yeah. Coffee and flushes. <laughs> she goes <laughs> sick. Double girl. Don't that. All kind of old pecan swirl. Yeah. And bring my change back, girl. Meet me at that Wawa off of Sheridan. Off of yeah, Sheridan. Right there. Right there. Yeah, down right from public. Right there. I need to hear Hey, Fantasha. Uh, I, I, I ain't trying to change the subject, but public chicken be hitting low key. Don't nobody be talking about that. They do. I'm about to pull up on the public chicken. They got yeah. bones. 
They got yeah, they got bones in it. Yeah, yeah, they got bones, but it's just it's it's, they got it's chicken good. tenders too. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was going to pick the bones. I best I ate the book. I accidentally ate the bones last time. I don't eat the bones. <laughs> I was going to. Yeah, the chicken tenders. I chew on the gristle. They got that. I do that. I chew on the gristle. I chew, I chew, I chew, I chew gristle like bubble gum. I chew. I blow bubbles with the gristle. I <laughs> All right, 26 minutes after the hour. Yeah, I got the front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. The front page is brought to you by Charmin. We all go whether you go with irresistibly soft Charmin Ultra Soft or the superior strength of Charmin Ultra Strong. You can't go wrong. Enjoy the go with Charmin. Front page news is brought to you by Charmin. We all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Of course, today is Super Tuesday. Voters are heading to the polls in 16 states, including Alabama, Arkansas, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. A special guest, U.S. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas, is joining us for a quick rundown about what's at stake and how we need to get out and show up today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being on your I'm happy to have you, Congresswoman. Thank you. Uh, I serve in the United States Congress as a chief deputy whip. The seat that I hold was held by Barbara Jordan. Over the years, I have had the honor of walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge to honor Bloody Sunday. And so this morning, I want everyone to understand that the vote is your power. And across America, African-Americans can change the history of their state. They can change the history of their nation. They can help young people wear braids to school, if you can believe it. There are young people being punished for wearing braids because of the discrimination and the elimination of DEI. Don't lose the right to vote. 16 states, cities like Detroit, Houston, cities uh, like uh, Richmond, Virginia, and Birmingham, Alabama, where you are. If you are there, you need to get out and vote. Honor those who marched, who died, who made a difference so that you might choose, not just for yourself, if you're not voting for yourself, vote for your children or even vote for your ancestors. Vote for your grandmother who could not vote in the early years. So, Ricky, that's why I wanted to give this overview. Uh, The issues that will be before us will be the funding of the federal government, the kind of people that you will elect to go to the United States Congress. It will be the education of your children, the kind of public schools you'll have, or whether or not uh, you will be uh, privatized. It will also be the kind of criminal justice system you have. I am the ranking member on the Criminal Justice Subcommittee. And when you vote, you vote to have a fair and just system. So voting is not just something to ignore. It is the power that helps you run your government because you are the bosses. But you can't be the boss unless you get out today and vote, vote, vote wherever you are. We want to see those numbers up. I want to hear those numbers on late night news that the power of the vote was overwhelming and therefore i am calling on everyone listening on this great show get out and vote your voice is your vote your vote is your voice that's what it's all about today and i'm proud to be part of those that will be out there pushing people to vote that's the history of our nation and the history of our people don't let barbara jordan down don't let martin down don't let john lewis down Don't let your very relatives down because that's what voting is about. Thank you so much for that reminder. We appreciate your leadership and everything that you are doing for our country. You heard it from the woman herself. Get out and vote. U.S. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, thank you so much for joining us. And, of course, we'll have more information on the website at rickysmileymorningshow.com. Right about now, it's time for sports. What's going on, Rock T? Real quick, man, the Denver Broncos will be releasing quarterback Russell Wilson just the second year into his five-year deal. That was worth $243 million. Broncos will take... $85 $85 million hit on the chin to let Russell go. Potential teams that he can wind up on. My opinion, Atlanta Falcons, Las Vegas Raiders, Minnesota Vikings, New England Patriots, and probably the favorite, Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to find out what happens, man, so stay tuned with that. Also, Philadelphia Eagle offensive lineman Jason Kelsey announces his retirement after 13 seasons. Yes, he's the older brother of Kansas City Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey and seven Pro Bowls 
first team all pro six times and he teared up when he was giving his announcement speech that's my quick sports support right there brad got the hey, hey rock what up but, man but it's, it's it's two black brothers that's re- also returned uh, from the nfl that nobody's talking about and i don't think that's fair I ain't falling for that one dog <laughs> <laughs> i'm a pro at this son <laughs> I'm a, pro. <laughs> I'm a pro at this, son. Brett. <laughs> no, sir. Yep. Brett, these nuts. <laughs> yep. A special guest, U.S. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas, is joining us for a quick rundown about what's at stake and how we need to get out and show up today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being on your Happy to have you, Congresswoman. Thank you. Uh, I serve in the United States Congress as a chief deputy whip. The seat that I hold was held by Barbara Jordan. Over the years, I have had the honor of walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge to honor Bloody Sunday. And so this morning, I want everyone to understand that the vote is your power. And across America, African-Americans can change the history of their state. They can change the history of their nation. They can help young people wear braids to school, if you can believe it. There are young people being punished for wearing braids because of the discrimination and the elimination of DEI. Don't lose the right to vote. 16 states, cities like Detroit, Houston, cities uh, like uh, Richmond, Virginia, and Birmingham, Alabama, where you are. If you are there, you need to get out and vote. Honor those who marched, who died, who made a difference, so that you might choose not just for yourself. If you're not voting for yourself, Vote for your children or even vote for your ancestors. Vote for your grandmother who could not vote in the early years. So, Ricky, that's why I wanted to give this overview. Uh, The issues that will be before us will be the funding of the federal government, the kind of people that you will elect to go to the United States Congress. It will be the education of your children, the kind of public schools you will have, or whether or not uh, you will be uh, privatized. It will also be the kind of criminal justice system you have. I am the ranking member on the Criminal Justice Subcommittee. And when you vote, you vote to have a fair and just system. So voting is not just something to ignore. It is the power that helps you run your government because you are the bosses. But you can't be the boss unless you get out today and vote, vote, vote wherever you are. We want to see those numbers up. I want to hear those numbers on late night news that the power of the vote was overwhelming. And therefore, I am calling on everyone listening on this great show. Get out and vote. Your voice is your vote. Your vote is your voice. That's what it's all about today. And I'm proud to be part of those that will be out there pushing people to vote. That's the history of our nation and the history of our people. Don't let Barbara Jordan down. Don't let Martin down. Don't let John Lewis down. Don't let your very relatives down because that's what voting is about. Thank you so much for that reminder. We appreciate your leadership and everything that you are doing for our country. You heard it from the woman herself. Get out and vote. U.S. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, thank you so much. (laughs) Drop it like it's hot. I knew you just had to get it out. If you blew it. (laughs) (laughs) You catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. Brett. No, son. Yeah, now. No, you you missed him. Right. It didn't it didn't you land. Missed the layup. It didn't land. <laughs> it rolled off the rim. It didn't land. Yeah. <laughs> It circled in and then popped. Not your boy, dog. Not your boy. Brett. It's not rock nah. easy. You hear about the two hey. brothers, the two, the two black brothers <laughs> from the NFL? Nah. Rock, they done blew the whistle. He's still trying to He's shoot it. He's still trying to argue about that. Real. They done blew the whistle, man. I'm ready for the hot spot. I don't know about yeah, y'all, but y'all talking pick about up your, Pick up your flag, man. Yeah. Play is dead. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, what was it? Ah, yeah. Next play, dog. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, right. somebody, yeah, almost somebody almost said, who, Rick? Y'all yeah, supposed to say, who, Rick? Uh-oh. Who, Rick? <laughs> yeah, <Lord. Nope. laughs> you tried to slide it in anyway. It didn't even. Oh, Ooh. man. Man, go on do the hot spot. Man. Y'all haters. <laughs> Ooh, wow, that was horrible. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and that was horrible. <laughs> and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. 
Jamie Foxx will hit the road to discuss the circumstances around his sudden hospitalization a year ago uh, during the African American Film Critics Association Special Achievement Awards luncheon. Foxx said, everybody wants to know what happened, and I'm going to tell you what happened, but I've got to do it my way. I'm going to do it in a funny way. We're going to be on the stage. We're going to get back to the stand-up sort of roots. After what he's been through over the past year, Foxx said that he sees life differently. He says, I'm so thankful, and I just get emotional because it was really, it's beyond the scope. Cherish life. Jamie Foxx is also set to return to the game show, uh, Beat Shazam, after recovering from his health scare. He will co-host the show alongside his daughter, Corinne. Beat Shazam features contestants competing uh, to guess the titles of the songs, with the winning team going head-to-head against Apple's music discovery software, Shazam. Congratulations to Jamie Foxx. I figured he would do it some kind of way and the best way he's gonna do it is just stand up is that a smart route that's good rick yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. take your show on the road keep doing what you're doing and then you know those movies are so hard to do but when you can do a game show that's you can do damn near three episodes a day that's gonna be a lot of fun for him and his daughter uh so happy for him uh so glad that he's doing well that he Me survived too. whatever Me he too. went through uh, we need Jamie Foxx and some uh, comedic happiness back on the scene. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's like when Chris Brown made us, Chris Brown, Chris Rock made us wait after the slap, and he did a, a special about it. So everybody want to know what's going on with Jamie Foxx, so he's going to do a comedy special about it and make us laugh. So congratulations to Jamie Foxx. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note. Don't forget to get out and vote. The time now is 26 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show.